Hi students, in last video we discussed about the minimum mode configuration of 8086 microprocessor. Uh, we discussed about the basic block diagram of minimum mode configuration and uh, the read cycle timing diagram, write cycle timing diagram. So next we are going to discuss about the maximum configuration. So in last video I told that what is the difference between minimum mode and maximum mode. So for example the minimum slash maximum pin which is connected to the, connected to the power supply that is logic 1 it will it will act as minimum mode configuration the same pin which is connected to the ground that is logic 0 it will act as maximum mode configuration so in maximum mode configuration as the name implies it contains more than one processor that is very important so more than one processor is nothing but as the additional processor is called as bus controller 8288 so the main processor is the 8086 microprocessor. So let me see the basic functions of maximum mode configuration. So in the maximum mode, the 8086 is operated by strapping the pin MN slash MX to ground. In this mode, the processor derives the status signals S2, S1 and S0. Another chip called bus controller which derives the control signals using this status information. So in this maximum mode, there may be more than one microprocessor in this system configuration. That is, the additional processor is nothing but as A to double eight bus controller. So first of all, we will discuss about the first block that is clock generator. So the clock generator, it has reset pin, ready pin, clock pin. And then here, in the top of the clock generator, there is a crystal which is used to generate the timing frequency. So the first one clock generator. And next is 8086 microprocessor with having some signals like ready bus high enable that is BHE and important see the in the diagram it shows MN slash MX pin which is connected to the ground so it will it is called as maximum configuration if suppose the same pin is which is connected to the power supply it is called as minimum mode configuration so uh, the block diagram of minimum mode is same as maximum mode except some few differences the first difference is this one the second is it has some additional processor like bus controller okay and here ad0 to ad15 it is nothing but as multiplexed address and data lines and a19 slash s3 to a17 slash s6 that is address and status lines so let me discuss about the functions of the bus controller so the basic functions of the bus controller chip IC8288 is to derive the control signals like read and write, DEN that is data enable, DT slash R that is data transmit slash receive which is used to decide the direction of the data flow, comma ALE using the, using the information made available by the processor on the status list. So, this is the, so well, the, base, the basic function of the bus controller is to, to derive the signals that is read and write signals. The first the output of the bus controller MRDC that is memory read command signal MWTC nothing but as memory write command signal. So IORC is input output read command signal and IOWC that is input output write command signal so it also derives some uh, advanced command signal pins that is nothing but as a i o w c that is advanced input output right command signal so this is the basic function of the bus control let us see the cs logic that is chip selection logic which generates the memory addresses for ram and rom devices okay especially it generates the even memory address bank and odd address bank that is cse chip selection it, it, it selects the even addresses that is e suffix e suffix o shows the odd address and here the latches as i before told that in the previous video latches is used to, to separate the addresses that is a0 to a15 and a17 to a19 so and next is data buffer so data buffer is also called as transceiver so the function of data buffer is to separate the datas so the data is nothing but as d0 to d16 and as usual there are ram devices rom devices and then io devices are there so this is the basic explanation of the block diagram of maximum mode configuration and next we are going to discuss about the command signals IORC, IOWC or input output read command and input output write command signals. These signals enable an input output interface to read or write the data from or to the addressed port. And the MRDC 
memory read command signal mwtc memory write command signal or used to memory read and write signals so this is the and, and, and let me see let me discuss about the uh, timing diagram so the maximum mode system timing diagrams are also divided into two portions as read and write timing diagrams so here before that we will discuss about the indication of the status lines okay so s2 s1 and s0 so these three status lines which defines the status of the processor okay let us see the condition first condition if the three lines are zero the indication is interrupt acknowledge if it is 0, 0, 001 the indication is read io port so as well as uh, if it is uh, if all the status lines are one the indication is passive so these are the indications which is depends upon the status lines so first let me discuss about the memory read timing in max maximum mode. So, the address slash data and address slash status timing diagrams are very similar to the minimum mode, which will be discussed in the previous video. It is same. The only difference in the status signals used and the available control and advanced command signals. So, the difference is what? So, here in maximum mode, we are using some command signals and advanced command signals. That is very important. See in the uh, clock cycle diagram, at first, at first, there is a clock cycle. So, there are a T1, T2, T3 and T4 are there. And first, ALE, that is address slash enable. During T1 clock cycle, this signal must be valid. And here, and ST to S0 is the status signs of read diagram. And see, it is very active in the clock cycle T1. And T2, it goes to inactive. After in T4, T4, at the end of the T4, it is going to, again, active condition. And again, the address lines, address slash status lines, the addresses are valid during T1 clock cycle, and the status lines are valid during T2, T3, and T4. As, and next is address slash data, it is also same as the previous one. During T1 clock cycle, the addresses are valid. During T2, T3, T4, the data lines are valid. Here, the memory read command signal, as usual, the read is your basically active low signal. So, this signal which is low during T2 between T4 and next is data transmit slash receive. So this signal is used to decide the direction of data flow. That is very important. The same operation which we discussed in the previous video in minimum mode configuration. Finally, data enable pin. So this is the memory read timing diagram in the maximum mode. And next, memory write timing in maximum mode. So it's the right timing cycle that is the uh, output operation it is also the same as the previous one so in this uh, right timing diagram it shows some advanced command signal that is amwc or aiowc that is a uh, advanced memory write command signal or advanced io write command signal which will be very uh, low signal during t2 and t4 and here data transmit slash receive is a high in write cycle so last one is data enable the data which is enabled during t2 and T4. So this is the output uh, timing cycle and this is the right, right timing cycle diagram. And next we are going to discuss about the request slash grant timings in the maximum. See, see, see in this diagram it shows the first clock cycle. <clears throat> in the second graph shows the request and grant signal. See in this diagram the second clock cycle that is the rising of the second clock pulse the master requests the bus access okay after one clock cycle at the falling edge see the third clock cycle that is why especially the falling edge the cpu will grant the bus access after one clock cycle the master which releases the buses so that's all so this is the basic function of request and grant timings in the maximum mode so uh, this is the concept of maximum configuration so uh, finally we conclude that in maximum configuration, the MN slash MX pin, which is connected to the ground, and then it will act as maximum mode. In, in this configuration, there is more than one processor is present. So this is the concept of maximum mode configuration. Thank you.